The show is made possible in part by its supporting sponsors. Blue Otter Power Group of Companies, Joe's Discount Tire, and AskGuy.ca. Never know where I'm going to end up. I know I say that every week, but it's really true. You never know if I'm going to be in a studio or somebody's home or an airplane. We've done that one, right? Um, but this one, uh, it's been a long time coming. I've been saying for a while that, you know, sometimes you, you, you meet people in your life and then you don't see them for a while. And then somehow it comes full circle back. And this time it's Roy Cunningham. How you doing, buddy? Pleasure. Thanks so much for giving me your time here. Oh, my pleasure, man. Yeah. It's good to see you again. Yeah, for sure. And well, I meant that, right? Like we would go back yeah, like quite a, a few years, and then time, yeah. and then there'd be like a a split breakup there, Just a hiatus. you know, and then a back. And actually, very interestingly enough. I, we ran into you, my wife and I rode on the motorcycles in, I don't know, somewhere. Mount Forest, it was. It was Mount yeah, Forest, yeah, that's Mount right. Forest. It was like, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's Dave. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's Roy Cunningham. Yeah, I was looking at you going, that sure looks like Dave. <laughs> like, it can't be. Yeah, we both but, get around, uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I was coming back from a gig, and yeah. you were coming back from an excursion. So. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Small world. Yeah, right. Crazy. Let's uh, let's start. Uh, I always the obvious question is uh, where are you from originally? Well, I'm a Toronto boy, born yeah. and raised. Okay. Um, probably two, three generations all oh, in wow. Toronto. Yeah. And then back to England, of course, like most of the your people that have been around here a long you're, time. You're so. you're from England? I'm not. I'm I was born but, and raised in Canada. My yeah. whole family was. Okay. So. All right. And my parents as well. So. Right. Did you live in England for a while? No, no. No, no. 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 Never been never been off the continent. Really? No. Yeah. No, no. family back there or no, no. Nothing by the time that we were around, yeah, yeah. there was yeah. there was nothing. Okay. Nothing that we would have known. Did you ever have a desire to go to England just yeah. because? No. Yeah. I like Canada. Yeah. I don't like flying. You don't, I don't. I like Canada, and I don't like flying. What do you like about Canada? Because you don't hear that too often. No, well, it's it, you know, it's <laughs> it's getting crazy, but it's getting yeah. crazy everywhere. And I just like because you have your freedom, you can do what you want, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. within reason. They're taking more of it away, but what are you going to do? Well, we've got to have some governing, though, don't we? Yeah, of absolutely. some sort. Yeah, you can't you just let everybody. No, know. of course, and it'd just be anarchy. So. Right. What does freedom mean to you living here in Canada? Just, Again, being able to do what I want, to be able to, you know, earn a living, yeah. come and go, play, do what I love, music. Yeah. Music's a huge part of what huge. this conversation is going to be. And uh, where did where did music first come into your life? Wow. Well, I get it from my father. Yeah? My How da- so? My father played piano, so just nice. recreationally, you know. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> as long as I've been around, there was a piano in my house. Yeah. So I kind of took to it around six years old. Wow. And, uh, wow, and just never stopped. Yeah, it was, uh, and all my family played. I, we, I'm the youngest of seven kids, so. Holy, wow. So uh, everybody played piano at one point or another, and I'm the only one that really stuck with it. Yeah. Uh, my dad really played his whole life. He played stuff like Stardust and, you know, old, oh, yeah. old standards and stuff, and and he just, uh, just he had a way of playing, and by that time I, I wasn't really playing Anything of any real consequence, six, seven years old, you just kind of learn the ropes. But I used to sit beside my dad all the time and play. And he, most of the time, played like boogie music. And, oh, yeah. And yeah. it's funny because I don't have a left hand, really. Okay. Okay. I'm all right hand. Yeah. And it's from those years of sitting yeah. beside my dad. So I couldn't play, use my left hand because he was using the left I hand. I was in the way. And so I would just do this and, and it just, it just, Ended up being that way, and back in those days, of course, you didn't have technology where you could listen to a song and right. and play at it at the piano. So it. I had to go up in my bedroom, listen to it, kind of figure it out, and come down and try and play it. Of course, when I come down and try and play, your my brain's not in the actual key, <laughs> right. so I'm playing in C, and my brain would just go to C, and I would just play the same because the yeah. intervals are the same, right? It doesn't sure. really matter what key you're playing in. And so I kind of play in C. All so the time. everything's in C. Yeah. I, now <laughs> technology lets me lie. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, right. right. Well, you could look at that guitar player and they'd say, uh, What key do you want to do? And say, Well, I can do anything. Yeah, but let's it doesn't do matter. C. Doesn't ma- well, it doesn't matter to me. You just tell me what key it's in. I'm going to make my keyboard adjust. Right, right. right. So I've, I've played with a lot of bands and I've told a lot of guitar players, Don't watch my fingers. Right. Because uh, they, <laughs> they just, what? Are, what is he doing? It's C. And it's, it's F and a C. Yeah, right. They're playing an F and I'm playing a C. What it sounds like an F, right? right? So then they play a B flat. You know, they they play a C and yeah. now it's my B flat and 
And so it's all just different. But it was easy for me to learn blues music because the intervals are all one, four, five. So okay, is so, that your favorite style to play? I, I early days was rock and roll, but I wasn't a great keyboard player back in my right. mid teens. It wasn't until I got like nineteen, twenty, and I actually ended up joining a blues band. Yeah, um, the sax player slash guitar player quit and left, and I walked on stage and never heard of Buddy Guy or Muddy Waters or oh wow any of those cats. Never heard of any. I yeah. just. The band was um, a buddy of mine's sister's boyfriend. He was a guitar player, and that's okay. we were out. So I was out. I was there to watch them play, <laughs> and the sax player didn't show up. He just booked it for Chicago, and so they said, "Can you come up and play?" And I'm like, "All right, I'll come up and play." And the rest, as they say, is it's history. history, right? Yeah, it yeah. really. How old were you in that? Happened? Nineteen. I was Nineteen. So I walked on stage, don't know blue song out of my wazoo, and I'm learning on the fly. So you faked it. Well, yeah, sort absolutely. Of. I mean, to the sense of, like, yeah, okay, no, yeah, well, I just following it. along. Oh, yeah, I faked it. I was late. <laughs> I mean, that first show, I was late on everything, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, there he is. Okay, there he is. Yeah. So, but these guys were university graduates. Mm. So they were well-schooled musicians. And, they, oh, and yeah. so they started to talk in numbers instead of instead of chords. Oh. And they say, play a four chord, play a five chord. So the interval oh, is the same. Oh, I see. So okay. Because I'm playing a C all night, I know what my one, four, five, <laughs> right, two, and six right. is. <laughs> it's not changing for me. Yeah. Wow. So they just get a jam going, and he'd look at me and say, four, all right, beautiful. <laughs> and, and you could get on that and a lot throw of your own rhythm into yeah, it. Yeah, and then yeah. later on, you just learn the songs, and yeah. and the rest is history. And then I just... So do you play by ear? Yeah. Yeah, all, all ear? Do you read music at all? I, I tried to learn to read music, but back in those days, you didn't have technology where you could get something like this. I took music in school, in high yeah. school, right? The grade nine, I took saxophone. And I... <laughs> I wish I'd known blues back then because I didn't know what I had in my hand. Oh, yeah. I had no appreciation. I'm, you're 14 years old listening to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, I have right. no appreciation for the saxophone that I have in my hand. Right? Right, right. None whatsoever. So I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I've got to take music because I'm into music. So I, I didn't really want to get stuck with the sax. <laughs> uh, but I was okay at it and whatnot. And, and I got through it. But I couldn't, I couldn't read music because... Back those, you had a music stand. Yeah. And so for me to see it, because I'm visually impaired, right. I got to lean forward to see the notes. Right. And then when I lean forward so far, I, my fingers come off my ah, instrument. Oh, okay. So right at, at that early age, I take the music, I go, go home and memorize it, and come back and play it. And mm -hmm. say, you played it perfect, but I'm mad at you because you're not reading the music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I passed. What does that matter? I played and that's it. That's what I used yeah. to But he said, it's about sight reading, right? And I said, well, I'm never going to learn to sight read. Right. That requires you to have sight. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you have picked up on this when <laughs> I signed up? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I really learned, started to get really good at being able to just listen to it and figure out the chords and the intervals and nice. what they're doing. And well, and it's like worked that. for you. And, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm have you good. have you always been visually impaired? Yeah, yeah. born and raised. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. so you learn to adapt. Wow. Well, so you don't that's know, I don't know you don't any, any different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know any different. You get, you know, I had the ridicule like anybody else. Sure. Would. Big sure. thick Coke bottle glasses. And... <laughs> yeah. So you, what? Yeah. I didn't know it bother me. Never yeah. really did. Imagine if you had learned the sax though, and that night I know. the sax player oh, left. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh man, what you a sax been player a, I could have been. Right. I think you've done all right with the keyboards. I, 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 I remember one of the first times I heard you play was a tiny little bar in town. And then uh, um, when I put on Indie Fest, you, mm -hmm. were, you were the first, you oh, were the yeah, first right. act out of all of it. That's playing. right. And I just, oh my goodness, wow. And then recently I was at the Moose Lodge and uh, uh, they were like, oh, Roy Cunning. I'm like, Roy's playing? Right on. I haven't seen him. You know, yeah, over that, there. Was, that was when we first ran into each other yeah. after all those years. We yeah, were there, yeah, that's right. And I was like, wow, Roy's, oh, we get him to play here. And I'm like, why? Because I'm a member. I'm like, oh, I didn't. Oh, I play all the time. Guess I got to read the bulletin. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. that was great. And so, I mean, obviously, uh, I got to ask the question of, you know, influence. So I'll just get, you know, Elton John and Billy Joel right out of the way. Yeah, I mean, I don't do, I don't really play a lot of Billy Joel, just. I don't know. It's just not really conducive to yeah. my solo show live. Yeah. It's yeah. it's great stuff. You know, I, one's got to be in people there. People ask, yeah, yeah. you know, they ask me to do it and they ask me for piano man all the time, but it's long and it's been and there. It, I've it's done it a hundred thousand times. You know, it's not even that. It's just not an energy song. Yeah, and and I I really don't play low energy songs in my show. No, 
I just, but it's one, you know, they're all going to sing along. Sleep. It's like an American You're pie. right, absolutely. And I don't do that either for, again, <laughs> right. seven verses, right? Right, eight minutes and 32 yeah. seconds oh, yeah, of... yeah, right? Yeah. And it's not that I'm getting bored. I just figure they're getting bored. Yeah. But and if I, they ask for I it... I know. It's like that, it's that Mustang Sally Yeah, song. absolutely. Like, like, we get it. Can we please not put that in a set? But you know, it's that <sighs> brown-eyed girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. do it. Margaritaville, especially yeah. now. Yeah, and... I and know. I mean, we don't, we had a rock band, uh, I had a rock band in Orangeville, and we hosted a jam for about six years, the bass player owned the bar. Okay. And every Sunday, you got a guy coming out, he comes out every Sunday to sing one song, and what song was that? Mustang Sally. Yeah, his version? Well, you know, he <laughs> you was know. okay, it wasn't really his version, because we were the backup band, so yeah. it was our version. It was your him, way, or your him singing, gonna, yeah, so. right. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, well, Mustang said, you know, George is coming out. Right. Actually, George Bennett lives here in town, so he's a Sarnia boy. Oh, you. who is it? Uh, George Bennett. Oh, I know George. Hi, George. Yeah. <laughs> I've known George from uh, yeah. quite a young age. Yeah, so, yeah. so I he used to hang out at the bar that we uh, yeah, yeah. We hosted the jam George at. is great. <laughs> so when I moved out of Toronto um, for the first time, I moved to uh, Orangeville. Mm-hmm. Um, so. What do you like about Sarnia that... How do I ask this question? Like, this is kind of oranges and apples comparing Sarnia to Toronto. I guess. Yeah, I suppose it is. But, but uh, like, what what was the draw to Sarnia? Uh, more it has a lot to do with what Toronto, what it, what it has, it doesn't have that Toronto has. Traffic, right. people, congestion. Yeah, yeah. I had enough of it. I had enough of yeah. just there. It was Super getting to busy. the point where by the time I got to work, I was so wound up. That I'm already going to have a bad day. Wow. And you don't need wounding up. Right? No. No. <laughs> no, certainly not. And, and yeah. the place I was working at, just I was working 16 hours a day. It was going to kill me. I was going to have a nervous breakdown. So mm. so I threw my keys on the desk and walked away from a high salary job and came down here with no job, no money, no mm-hmm. nothing. If it wasn't for the generosity of some friends. Yeah. I was going to say, so how'd you pull that off? That helped me yeah. out. And well, I had an old boss that helped me out and... Basically, just gave me some money, and right. so that tied me over. And then I applied for EI, and I quit. I walked away. You know, yeah, I walked out the door and got in the car yeah. and drove down here. And every kilometer, you just feel the stress leaving me. Right. Right? Yeah, it's not interesting uh, that I gave up money. I gave up. I I, a, a, a I didn't know how I was going to put job. food in my mouth. Yeah. I, I didn't know what but I was going to. But you gonna, felt better. By I felt doing better. It. That's Absolutely. how stressed out I you were. I felt right? better. But I'd been coming down here for like ten mm-hmm. years. I hadn't moved here yet. You know, with playing yeah. with yeah. Dave's band and all that, and and so I was coming down here every weekend. Mm. It was to the point where, I, and I didn't want to leave. And mm. every time I had to go back to Toronto, go to work on Monday, it's like I don't want to go back there. Yeah, that's a crappy and, place to yeah, be. And right? it just ate at me all. And then as each year went by, it just ate at me. And then finally, 2016, I just came down here, and yeah. and then uh, it's turned out nice. So the first job I applied for. I, I still work there now. There it is. Right on. Oh, okay. At Macwell. Uh-huh. So, are you welder? Or no, no. Do do? I'm software developer. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. That's what I. That's kind of so. They're my two loves: software and music. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm a computer pinhead, but yeah, yeah, but I'm an old school guy. I grew up. I was fortunate enough to. You're get still me. coding and basic. Yeah, not. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am in Visual Basic. Yeah, yeah. Not now, yeah. That's it's crazy. Still basic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. So, I mean, you're doing what you love. You're. Your uh, your software and, yeah, and your music came in. Yeah, and, and I've been very blessed to be able to do good time. And you play things. a lot of gigs around here, yeah, but I'm you still so, travel out of town too I'm to so, do yeah. that, obviously. Well, the band gigs, yeah, I don't get a lot of solo gigs too far out of town anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but we get a lot of band gigs in Hanover and Midland and Wasaga Beach. Yeah, and, yeah. Now the solo gig is uh, interesting to me. Um, we were out uh, riding the motorcycles with my family there uh, this past weekend and. We went out to uh, uh, Shale Ridge, and there was just a young girl, you know, maybe 17, 18 years mm-hmm. old, just strumming away on the guitar, but singing like, you know, and um, that can be a tough gig, because sometimes people clap, because yeah. your background music, yeah. and then other times they catch something, and you go, oh, and then they really clap, and do you, do you find that with the solo oh, I get, gigs? I get that. I mean, I'm a little, I'm a little <laughs> bit different. You're pretty it's, engaging. Um it's just because of the, I'm a single guy up there behind the keyboard yeah. with this wall of sound coming out at you. Mm-hmm. So it's not just there with a the guitar, kind yeah. of like the Joan Baez thing. I've got this binary backup band behind me that's just barfing it yeah. out, right? Yeah. So 
I kind of, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of times where you don't get crowd response. Yeah. It happens, and I'm like, but I'm not background music. No, you're not. Right? And I tell people that hire me, look, if you want Joan Baez in the corner, dinner music, I'm not your guy. Yeah. I'm a rock and roll show. Yeah, um, you sure are. I always wanted to actually take it to the, get it to the level where I had full production behind me and all choreographed lights and everything. And I've done all that, but they're just the rooms that don't. I'm not. Not all rooms cover. Well, that. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. Well, that'll be seven hundred dollars, please. Yeah. Right. Right. You know. Well, that's interesting. You bring that up because I I've asked uh, 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 several local musicians um, that uh, like Sue Weber and, and a few others mm-hmm. that I've interviewed and. I'll ask you the same question. At least in this area, are musicians getting paid their worth? Uh, I know that's hard because you don't want to upset anybody that pays you, but... No, no, like, but to be honest, <laughs> I, I think that's, I think musicians generally haven't got paid their worth for 50 years. Yeah. Um, I can't really speak for here as much as back... I mean, most of my... I played in the blues band for 22 years and it was pretty much $50 a man. Wow. That's what it was in Toronto. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just so much competition. But still, even here, it's like I, th- you know, I re- a hundred bucks a guy. Yeah, that's and, and that that's was been that way thirty for, years that I've that's been, been that way forever, right? But back thirty years ago, well, hundred dollars was, was a lot of money, more, exactly. But uh, it's the same. so how do how do we how do we ch- change that? I, I guess the only real way to change it is for the musicians to all band together and say, and I mean, you got to be prepared to not work. Yeah. I suppose. You got to learn how to say no? I guess. And say, yeah, I'm not going to play for $100 a man And anymore. that's why the single gig's right? better. Sure, because I get, I actually get, get paid more gotta money. You got to split it with you and the keyboard. I get, right. <laughs> the places that I play are very generous. Yeah. They they really are. I, I honestly have to say, they're very, now again, I don't play for less than 200 bucks. Right. Because it, it's... See, and even that I find But it's little... an hour and it's, a, it's, you know, it's an hour and a half of my time just to set my show up. Yeah. I'm not walking in with a guitar, opening the guitar and sitting down. Well, and... then, you know, tearing it down and then most of the gigs are a weekend gig. So, um, giving up time with family. Yeah, that's true. Friends. Yeah. Or, hey, you know what? For less than that, I'll just sit home and watch Netflix. I'd, yeah. I mean, it beats me up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, you know the, the day after, I'm sore. I'm hauling speakers and right. picking up my keyboard and the yeah. gear and the computers and the screens. Yeah. and because you're not 19 anymore. Right? Yeah, no, you got that right. <laughs> and I feel it. Yeah, you I know? hear you. I hear you. But you still do it. You got a really great passion for it. So aside from the, the Elton John and the Billy Joel obvious influence that every keyboard piano player would have, uh, who else is in oh, there? Oh, well, wow, Super Tramp for sure. Yeah, well, that's right like, on. Super Tramp. Super Tramp is like really high on my list. Yeah. Just the phenomenal band, phenomenal musicians, phenomenal keyboard playing. Like, yeah. To understand it as a musician, it's just it's ridiculous. I listen to them and still go and close my eyes and go, like, how does any, honestly, any musician, as the karaoke guy I was mm, for 100 yeah, years, yeah. I still. I never put myself in the same category as a musician because it's like, how do you get three, four, eight people to play something yep. that comes out and makes me want to go, that sounds like the original, or if it's not an, if, if it's their original, yeah. just to go, wow, how did they tune. pull that yeah. off? Yeah, and that's what, I mean, you look at those bands, like, you just, I'm blown away, but how did you think that up? Think it before you How did you guys it? even write that song? Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you listen to Boston's first album. It's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Especially for the time. Absolutely. Of the technology that wasn't there. Ridiculous. Yeah. Right? Look at Yes. Yeah. This oh, they were great. incredible. Just the writing is just Genesis. The writing is nuts. It's yeah. nuts. Yeah. And you just, how did you... <laughs> <laughs> what were you guys taking that made you think that? Oh, what were man? you smoking that day? <laughs> like seriously? Yeah. Do you write? Um, I have with the with the band with Cold South. Mm-hmm. Um, for you know, just because we needed songs, so I just all right, I'll give it a stab. But I don't generally. No. I I honestly prefer to play cover music because it's just so much more fun and play stuff that people, especially in my solo. So you can't go around and do an original. There's just not a market for it. Yeah. Well, not maybe here. It, and it's not even here. I think it's more of a time. Me, time, age. Yeah, right. Okay? Like, I, think it's... I love my band. I like the fact that we do 16 originals and all that plus a whack load of covers. But to, the, 
to be truthfully honest with you, there's, there's not a market for that type, for that original music. Yeah. That ship sailed. Do you throw one in once in a while in well, the show? In my in my solo show, almost never. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I really go out of my way to find songs that you would not expect somebody to play. Yeah. Like what? Uh, well, you know, like I'll do Colin James music with the little big band stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, I love big band music. My parents, my dad could whip my mom around. Doing... You mean like the, the Glenn Miller? Yeah. Type oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you get to get that swing music going. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, I thought, I don't know how how they catch each other. <laughs> right. well, wouldn't want if you miss, miss it, it, the way he'd fling my mom around, if he missed her, she's going 20 <laughs> feet. She's, she's taking a yeah. spell. A lot of and trust just to watch that. them and uh, close friends of mine, their, their parents too, same thing. They could just whip each other around that dance floor and I just love that, the horns. It's just incredible. Yeah. The power, the crescendos. It hits you right in the Yeah, it does. It just, yeah. and I was fortunate enough to go see uh, Brass Transit when they were at the Imperial wow, Theater. Oh, yeah. And that's a Chicago cover band. Yeah. And they melted my head. Yeah. That was a bad, honestly, I've seen a lot of concerts in Toronto. And I've seen Van Halen. I've seen, yeah. you know, I've seen Floyd. I've seen the Stones. That band right there, Brass Transit, was the best show I've ever seen in my life. Wow. That says a lot. That's, it's just, they were just so good. I tell you, go see them. Go find where they're playing and go see Brass, Brass Transit. Transit. Okay. If you like Chicago, that, that, you close your eyes and you cannot. You that was Chicago on that stage. Is that right? One hundred percent. And that, like, that's hard to duplicate. Absolutely. You might even think you mentioned like Pink Floyd in there, and you think Pink Floyd. I've seen one Pink Floyd tribute band, and I was completely impressed mm -hmm. on. That's hard to duplicate how, too. Well, especially with like all the female yeah. vocals yeah. that are in it, and the precisionness mm -hmm. of. That sound, that bell, yes, everything absolutely. has to come in, or it just That's ruins right. that whole yep. thing, right? To the triangles and, but Chicago, and I've seen Chicago uh, twice in oh, my really? life, oh, wow. and uh, they were just nah, it's just ridiculous. So for you to say that, yeah, wow, ridiculous, yeah. and. So and now I'm like, okay, well, I got to throw some Chicago tunes into my show. Yeah, now. <laughs> but it's not. I'm easy still to, trying to figure I, out what 25 or 64 means. I, I I don't know. I think I looked it up once and I don't remember. It was a drug related. Oh, well, maybe something 25 or 60, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll never know. I don't know. Nobody's and of course, I'm not singing Peter Cetera songs. So oh I yeah. Gotta sing the other guys. Yeah, game, right, so. right. Because that's I'm, cool. Uh, because I'm and you mentioned Genesis in there too. Like that's because uh, I remember you know the time of them. Uh, well, time of them coming out. Like, I first learned of them in the 80s, Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, then, stuff earlier, like with Peter Grable in the early yeah. days, that's whacked out stuff. Yes. <laughs> that's whacked out stuff. It, I'm still impressed by the writing, but it's whacked out stuff. Yeah. Um, and then Phil came along. Yeah, and then once Phil took over. And it's funny because I don't, they, I don't think they really wanted to go that direction. The record company kind of come out and so said, okay, you don't have any girls coming to your shows. You don't have any girls <laughs> buying your albums. Oh, yeah. You need to write a couple of songs where you're going to track girls and, of course, follow you, follow me, and then some of the misunderstanding and turn it on yeah, again, yeah. Stuff, some yeah. of that stuff, which is a little more melodic for it's just a little more closer to home yeah. Genesis music. And, of course, Phil kind of just pushed it that way with his natural progression, too. Right. So and I was a big, huge Phil Collins fan, too. Were you sad when 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 it just became Phil and no more? No, Genesis? no, not really. I probably didn't even really appreciate Genesis until after. after right until all after, that. yeah, yeah. He was in the eighties and, and even into the nineties. Nah, he's just, he's he, he was just. Uh, I've never heard another artist duplicate anything close to what he did with his voice yes. and, and then the drums. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Never mind the drums, right? Absolutely. You know? I think his son tried, but that didn't go so well. <laughs> but yeah, he's just fabulous. Yeah. What is it that uh, um, uh, excites you most about playing? Like, what's the what's the why behind it? Uh, you know, it's funny. Like we were talking earlier about all the work that goes into to getting set up to play a mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. uh, even with the band. You know, I mean, all the speakers that you got to bring and set the whole front of the house up. You got to do all that. You get and all that. And learn all that music and the tens and twenty and thirty thousand hours that you spend practicing. And I mean that. I'm, I'm talking literally thirty, forty thousand hours of yeah. real time yeah. in my life playing. Um it's just like why do I bother anymore? Because the first 
30 seconds I get on stage and start that song, I, it's like I'm at Maple Leaf Gardens. My brain just goes, I just, I'm lost in the music. I just, it's, <coughs> you have to love the music. If you don't yeah. do it for the love of that music, then you're not, you're doing it for no other reason. love on, for being on stage? Yeah, oh yeah. I get itchy when I'm not. Yeah. I get itchy. I just, yeah. like, I gotta, it's just something about performing. It's, it's a whole other level. Is it a control thing? And I don't mean no. like, like a control, like I'm going to control no, you. No, that's not. It's like, like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, you gotta be, you gotta be a little cocky. You do, don't you? Because if you go up there scared, going, oh, I hope they like me, oh, I hope I'm good enough, then it's going to show in your performance. It will, won't it? I go up there and I'm going to kick your butts. Yeah. I'm going to make you guys stand up and go, whoa, that guy's playing music. Yeah. Right? And you do. <laughs> you have to. You have to. I, I'm not even going to, if I don't enjoy it and I don't have fun doing it, you're not going to have fun. I go back to the me. moose the one time I saw that you were there. Another time that I didn't know you were there, and I happened to be there doing something else, and and then oh, Roy's playing in there, and I'm like, what? We were doing something in the back room. Mm. Roy's playing. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, hey guys, we got to come out and sit down for a bit, and and then I think the girls wanted to go shopping or something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and I was yeah. like, no, 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 or, or go ahead and leave me here, like whatever. And then and then uh, as they started that. listening more, they were like, wow, he is rolling in. That song I haven't heard anybody do in a long time, yeah. right? So I like to find those little one hitters. Yeah. How that, do you find them? Um, I, YouTube. I know. I, <laughs> I actually sit down and I'll just come up with artists, and I'll just try and go after artists, or I'll search like one hit wonders of the seventies, and I'll and I'll just Google that kind gotcha. of stuff and go find something. I was one of the songs I do um, is a Sanford Townsend band song. It's uh, "Smoke from a Distant Fire." And it's a one hit, their one hit wonder band from the 70s. And I come across them on YouTube, just flipping around where it come up. And it was a midnight special show. Oh, yeah, right. All the midnight special. And, <laughs> and so here they are. And a tune just blew me away. It's like, wow, that's great. I wonder if I can find a version of that. And of course, I, naturally, I did. So, yeah. and that's a hard song to sing. And, and that, a lot of the songs that I put in my show, I put in because they're hard. Yeah. Steely Dan is hard. Yeah, you stretch it though, right? And that, and that when. You challenge yourself. That yeah, way, right? that's exactly and what it is. And then when it comes out, it comes out friggin' awesome. Well, it's like, and every time I do that one song, it's like, well, I better hit that note. Yeah, Here we go. <laughs> hope my voice is ready for it. Yeah. You, know, you take that big breath. And there's times where I'll come under. I'm just like, I'm not going to hit it today, and I'll go underneath it. Yeah, yeah. Right? But I don't. You got to do some white snake I, for that stuff. No, <laughs> that's, that requires kicks in the genitals. And right. Stuff. I heard that song today and I went, yeah. I don't know. I it's only one guy I know that's ever, uh, well, at least done it on karaoke and pulled it off. That was Ed Brennan. Yeah. Ed's got a great, he he's got a rock and roll voice. voice right? yeah. He's got a rock and roll You've played voice. with a lot of different people uh, over the years. Anybody, um, and, and I know you appreciate everybody you play with, but I mean, anybody like, stand out a, a, a name like a famous a celebrity or just anybody that you played with maybe you were surprised by or uh, not really I, I, I'm, <clears throat> I didn't really haven't played with a whole whack load of people playing in blues the same blues band for right. 22 years yeah, I suppose, same, right. same four guys um, when I moved to Orangeville and it's funny because I went to the bar because I wanted to get a solo gig there and my solo show, when I when my blues band finally packed it in, that's where the solo show came from because I couldn't put another band together, and it's like oh, I'm going to make my own band. Right. And I, when I first started doing it, I was just doing it in my cousin's backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had friends and family over, and I'd set yeah. up and play, and he'd sing some songs too. So, and when I did it in a bar a couple of times, it was early days, and this one guy came up to say, "You know, you're like karaoke on steroids." <laughs> right. And I've never forgot that. Yeah. And uh, and that's really what my show is. It's karaoke on steroids. Yeah, yeah. Because you use some backtracking. Yeah, well, it's all backtracking. Yeah, you don't yeah. hide that. No, no, means. of course not. I but the... your keyboard playing is is the, the the lead singer, I guess, if you will. That's that. I have to do something. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just karaoke. Yeah. Regardless of all the energy yeah. you can bring, hey, if I went out and did karaoke, you know, I'm it's going to be a big difference than anybody else is walking 100%. up there to do karaoke because yeah. I'm going to. I'm gonna give it to you, right? Yeah, it's yeah. all a matter of approach. But you gotta, you gotta do your homework. 
you got to know the song so well that that don't think. And then they, <laughs> my band's always the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to say that when I sang karaoke. Yeah, it's, they're never it going to play it different. No, it was a CD then. Yeah, they're never going to yeah, play it different. That's the up. same every time. <laughs> so I better not screw yeah, up. Yeah, right. And, you know, you get to know that track so well, you know the little hitches, the nuances <laughs> yep. in it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do School by Supertramp, and there's a spot in there that if you're not paying attention to a little hitch in there because there's no time it's not like somebody sitting there doing no, that's that right. in that little yeah. dead spot yeah. where this where you hear yeah, the student yeah. scream and then the song <laughs> kicks in and if, and if i don't hear it i'm done i'm late yeah <laughs> so i'm really listening for this little hitch that's in that song that's kind of silent and if you're in a room where everybody's kind of into what you're doing you can hear it but when they're all talking and it gets to that spot and it's quiet I'm like, oh, I can't hear it. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to be late for sure. And sure enough, we'll just, bang, we'll I'm just, like a half a second behind the phrase. We'll just fake it through. Yeah. We'll just <laughs> yeah, keep just going. catch up and go. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that comes from years of playing on stage. You just yeah, learn, sure. you learn how to gracefully make mistakes and not have people notice them. Well, making mistakes is, uh, I mean, that's part of the success of a lot of things, right? Well, wow, absolutely. But, but when it's a performance, I mean, you've done the rehearsal, then the performance comes. Like yeah. you really do expect that to be perfect. Don't oh, you? I do every time. I expect <clears> me to <throat> sing the song right all the time. The words right. There's, <laughs> I have a screen on on front of me with the words there, yeah. and it's not because I need to look at them. It's because I'm old and I'm going to forget the third <laughs> verse, and I'm going <laughs> to. I've done it on stage with my blues band. You're like you're 12 bars into a 16 bar solo. You got four bars left, and I had no idea what the third <laughs> verse is. It's not coming to me. It's not in my head. I have no idea. Three bars, uh, two bars, one. Oh, there it is, and it just yeah. it'll magically pop in just before I got to open my right, mouth. Right. And there's been times where I've been caught. There's been well, the singer in my blues band before I was singing. He'd just make up words. Yeah. And he'd just pull it off. He just that wasn't not even. A lot of people don't. Well, know you know, depending on what time of night it is. Yeah, well, that too. too. <laughs> you can most, do the most third, people don't first, notice. first. Then. Yeah, you could, and, no, and nobody would know the difference. That's for sure. But so I have them there, just so all you got to do is a little glance over that first line, and you're in. I did right? that all the years with karaoke. Well, that's say, what well, it is. you don't look at the screen, and I'm like, I, I'm glancing at yeah, it for absolutely. a few words, yes, and then when I get sure. the cue, okay, yeah. now I'm not looking. Yeah. But uh, it was like a security blanket. I was. It is. It's an emergency blanket. Yeah. And. I mean, I'm fortunate enough being a software developer that I just wrote my own software on stage, so everything's there, and right, it's all right. at the tap of a button, and it's all in sync. And yeah, really, the software you use is all yeah. something you developed. Yeah, yourself. I, I wrote it, so I, so wow. the words are there automatically, and they go with the song. So it's, is it like on an iPad or something? Yeah, or is, yeah. So on, you do? I just did a full size screen or a small one, a little oh. iPad. It's all PC driven now. We used to be iPad for years, but. I find the wireless technology kind of. Oh yeah, you got like a mini PC on. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, how do you think uh, you'd be doing now, or how would you pull it off if you didn't have that technology backing you up? Like, well, not to take I, away from your talent I, as a keyboard I, player by any means. I, I, but... I, ha I have to get a band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this. I mean, I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not a lounge player. Yeah. So I can't, I can't just sit there on a piano and go sit there right. and, with a cigarette there. And so you're not the piano. No, man. absolutely. <laughs> I'm not that kind of player. I'm yeah. just, I'm not. It's you don't want to be. I, I don't know. I, I just, I, it has a lot to do with no left hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way to go, Dad. And, and could I, could I have spent all those years getting my left sure. hand going? Sure, I could have. But you know what? I was in a blues band. But you use it. I like, do, you're just but a I four, use it for four finger use, chord. Yeah, right? I use it for. And just, my dad played like that for right? years. And that's why this hand flies. This hand just sometimes I don't even know half the time. I can go up and down the keyboard and not even know half the notes I hit. Yeah, you like ragtime too, eh? Yeah, I, I all just because I, is it because it's so fast? All the, well, it's not. It's just the, that style of music, right? Yeah. Bluegrass is just incredible. It doesn't even have to be piano based music. Like you, you listen to fiddle players and mm -hmm. and mandolin players and bluegrass, and it's just 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 ridiculous. Have you ever thought you know fiddle and violin? Uh, you know, that's kind of popular around Sarnia, actually. There's a mm -hmm. few great players. Yeah, there is. I always think of Caitlin Mason. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought of adding something into it? I've, or are you I've, just happy? I've, I've, I've just actually thought about getting a guitar player. And, and yeah. you know, <clears throat> in today's technology, you can really do a good job stripping out guitar tracks out of those tracks as well, right? Mm -hmm. Not like karaoke songs where they just remove the vocals yeah, and everything's yeah. there. And you can't change that, right? Yeah. 
So there's a there's technologies coming out where you can actually take the guitar out. There's companies out there that actually make songs purposely that allow you to do that. You mm. got to pay for it and sure. pay for the licensing because you got to legally legally. But I figure it's worth the money because it's making me money. Yeah. So, so do your due diligence, pay your license fees, and yeah, and use the songs right. Um, so I thought about it having a guitar player there and be nice, be nice to have. But then it's like, all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna want to start a band. Right. If I had my way, I'd be in a band all the time. If yeah. my band was busy enough, but then you're making I less. I wouldn't. Yeah, but I'd still have more fun. Yeah, it's way more fun to play with other human beings. So there it is, right? To go back to that conversation of, well, you know, I think I should get paid more, but it's a lot of fun, so I'll do it, right? And that's it. Really uh, is. That's hard. Hard to say no, especially when I when I know that I can come out there and do and I and people stand up and take notice. Yeah, and they and they appreciate what I'm doing. Yeah, and you know what else have you done besides I'm going to try to steer him away from the music a little bit but is there anything else you've done that that besides the software and the music that you're like I really enjoyed that <laughs> is that just all been no a- really not since you know I mean I, I, I like hockey I like baseball but oh yeah I'm a sports I, guy I, I watch of course yeah I don't, I don't play it I mean I did back in when I was young and played baseball and hockey and stuff but by the time music took a hold of me where I was doing it professionally, that was it. Yeah. That was it. I mean, I love my IT. My job is there primarily because it has to be, because mm-hmm. music's not going to pay those bills, mm-hmm. right? Did you ever at one point think music would? No. <laughs> no? Okay, okay. <laughs> no, well, no. that's an honest answer. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No? I never even, I didn't even chase it. Were you a, were you a partier when you were oh, younger? Yeah. Like, you partied yeah. with it and... I mean, I goes along with it a lot. Yeah, of times. yeah, but not by the time I started playing. It, really, in the early days, I was drinking, and I remember the, we did a private gig at this place down at Bathurst and College, I think it was. And okay. We, and we rented this room, and and I spent the money, and I bought the beer, and I bought the kegs. Well, my guitar player decided <laughs> decided he's going to roll the kegs down the hallway. Oh. So he rolled both the kegs down the hallway. Well, now it's all foam. Right. <laughs> So I've got 160 people at this party that all paid, and then nobody's oh, drinking the kegs. Oh, boy. They're all drinking the bottled beer, and they're drinking the booze. But nobody's drinking the kegs, and I paid for them. I'm drinking the kegs. <laughs> oh, boy. So I'm dumping it into a pitcher, putting my fist down there, getting the head to go away, topping her up. And I'm. And by the third set, we went on stage, and they had this... this this hall had a, a B3 Hammond organ there, the real deal, oh, with yeah, the Leslie nice. and everything. So I'm up there, <laughs> and my guitar player reached across the stage, and he just grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and went, you're playing in the wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time I drank. Is that right? That was the last time I drank on stage. I've never done it. I, you don't drink anymore? I now? don't know. No. I mean, I have a beer every six months, and if it's just somebody, you know, yeah, gives yeah. me a beer, I feel obliged to kind of drink sure. it. And, and half the time, it's half of it. And the, yeah, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> this is not my thing. So that was an aha moment for you then. Oh, for sure. Oh, oh I, I absolutely. It. And yeah. it's just you know, do you want to take it seriously or do you want to do you want to just go yeah. up there and be a hack? Yeah. And it's like, no, I don't want to be a hack. Good for you. I spent too much time to not be a hack. How so. many years ago was that? You think that 40, long ago? 40? Forty. Yeah. 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 How does, how has, um, well, let's talk more about technology. I mean, like, do you record stuff? Uh, I mean, we did with the original music that we wrote for the band and stuff like that. Um, uh-huh. I don't record my shows really very often. I did a few broadcasts when COVID was yeah. rampant. And yeah, everybody was that. staying home. Yeah. So I did a couple of broadcasts. And that what was, was that like? It was, it was fun, but it was weird because yeah. I'm, I'm in my little room by myself. The camera's there, so I know people are watching. I mean, it wasn't many. Yeah, but it's not like it wasn't still... CBC here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, you, you know, you should have done comedy. I had, I had a few friends watching, and it was like, yay, right on. But, but you know what? I I remember thinking to myself, I still got to give them a show. And so, I mean, when I rehearse, I rehearse like I'm playing because you have to, because if you're not going to do it. It's always 400 or 4,000 or whatever out there. And, and if there's four people in the room, they deserve the show. Absolutely. Like, so it was packed, Absolutely. Right? And it, it, even if there's nobody that, in the room. That's hard, right? Because it, it's, it, it, it's tough sometimes. Something about that being on stage, there's an energy. 
that you just oh absolutely suck it absolutely in, right? when and they're into it, it oh my gosh there's no that's why i love being on stage is yeah. because when you get that energy back from them that just you just you, it just launches you and your playing just goes exponentially up because they're bringing it out of you mm -hmm. right and there's t you know when they're not and nobody's really paying attention you still do what you do it's kind of you kind of go into paid rehearsal mode sometimes <laughs> right <honestly. laughs> yeah. you, i mean you do yeah um it's tougher there was i can't count how many gigs we played downtown and in downtown Toronto, right down in Bay Street, and playing for the bartender. She was the only one there. Yeah. Have you ever bombed? No. No. I can't see you bombing. Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Do you think you could do comedy? You could do stand up I comedy? I, I don't know, maybe. You kind of touched on that years ago, didn't you? Yeah. With, well, a, you know, with an alter ego? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was just, you know. He's like, oh, he's got to bring <laughs> that up. I said. I think... Uh, what was it, Gary? Yeah, that's, that's what it's saying. Uh, <laughs> I, I think... Uh, that he was, was on the show for a while. That's right. And then we canceled him before yeah, I cut. got canceled. He was cut. <laughs> um, I, I think that was just... Uh, yeah, I think might have been a little midlife crisis going on there. <laughs> that wasn't that. It was... Yeah, yeah I'm a goofy guy. It was guy. fun. That was. It I'm was. a goofy guy. I'm a, I'm, Every week, you, I'd say, I, I, I have to go back of, and look at that. Gary... Gary Ward, it was. Gary yeah. Ward, that's right. That's even had a Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> One yeah, I don't even know how... The guy you're putting on the show. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Gary Ward. They're like, no, who is it really? I'm like, it's Gary Ward. Yeah, I mean, that's... I can't tell them who it is. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, it was like... How, how, how stupid can one person possibly be? I thought it was hilarious. Right? Well, and it was just pure stupidity. It was fun. Um, and, and it was all out of, it was just right out, it was out of my ass, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was just. <laughs> See, the thing is, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, he had a, I, Gary had a, 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 a word. You could have been like that, uh, uh, oh, what's his name, uh, Man on the Moon guy. Oh, um, oh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman yeah. and his alt, the alter ego. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Was that what Gary was to you? Ah, it was just, it was me being stupid. Yeah. It, plain and simple. It's yeah. just, just trying to, how stupid can you be? How stupid. That's, I think that was one of the sayings that Gary said. How stupid oh, you can can't, you be? <laughs> or you can't fix stupid, you know, right? whatever. Yeah. But What's, uh, let me try to get personal with you now. Like you, uh, you just got married. Yep. Um, and, and before that in life, uh. Uh, you had relationships and they didn't, I, I they didn't, didn't work out? No, I had a couple. Yeah. So I didn't, I mean, music didn't really, y'all think rock and roll's rock and roll, eh? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> no. What do you okay. mean? Okay, you don't just get in a band and then you get all kinds from everywhere. It doesn't happen. Right, right. Okay? Right. You go home at night at the end of it and you see all nice looking women that aren't with you. <laughs> okay? So. Yeah. Would you say that, uh, uh, but where you are now, and where here we are, we're in Sarnia, in your home, uh, and you just got married back uh, August... Uh, August 19th. Congratulations, yeah. Yeah, by the way. You. And I have to tell you, I saw you out somewhere uh, and congratulated you, and you were, you were like, oh, maybe it was at the Moose at that gig, and you yeah. said, and then I'm playing my own gig. That's I'm right. playing my, playing own, my wedding. own wedding. I'm like, yeah. you can't do that. And yes, you were I like, did. watch me. Uh, yes, and you did, did it. I did. I had both my band and my solo. So, show. and where was where was your Susan, wife? Susan, she was there. She was she was the one. She was all for it. Yeah. Oh yeah, she loved it. So you didn't have to go around and say hi to everybody then. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did, did before. Breaks? Yeah. Before. Yeah. yeah, I did before before I uh, got out of the monkey suit because I told <laughs> her I'm not playing in the tux. <laughs> yeah. Now there'll be none of that. Yeah. So I. And it turned out to be a nice day. Yeah, it was beautiful. The day was beautiful. The wedding was perfect. Everything was perfect. Like it just couldn't have went any better. Yeah. My cousin married me. Nice. So that was incredible. So. Yeah. yeah. And where did you and Susan meet? Uh, we met here um, in Sarnia. Obviously, I played a gig out at um, at the Milftown Barn out there. Oh in yeah. In Lackey. And uh, she had come out with because uh, the bass player's girlfriend and her. Are, Oh, oh, her lifelong okay. friends, high school since high school. So was this a setup? So she was there. I don't know. It wasn't. And, and in fact, um, when I inquired about Susan, they both uh, the bass player and his girlfriend said, "Yeah, she's not interested in anybody. Don't don't waste your time." Oh, really? And then you went, "Oh, I, really?" I just went, "All right, that's fine." I just took a, took them for their word and just left it alone. And then a week later, she just gave me a thumbs up on Facebook. 
And I just chatted and said, hi, how's it going? And then we chatted for a couple of days, and, or actually probably about a week, week and a half. And I took her out on a date, and as they say, the rest is history. history. Good for you. And Good for uh, you. So how long, how long have you been together total? Uh, just over three years. Yeah. yeah. See, I ask those questions, guys go, ah, uh, geez, I hope I get this right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I had to think for a second. Don't, don't ever forget the anniversary. Well, it, it's, it's, we actually went on our first date in September 19th, which is her birthday. Oh, and so getting married August 19th kind of pounds it in my oh, head yeah. now, so it's nice. Yeah, well, you know how you uh, uh, never forget an anniversary? Forget it once. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I won't be allowed to. That's not going to happen. You. She'll be telling me three days before. Right, <laughs> reminding you. So, just saying. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, it, 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 you can tell your happiness it really comes out in you, and I, I, I know... Uh, knowing you for many years, I really see a difference. Well, oh, that's good. And, and in a positive way. I'm blessed. Know? I am. I really yeah. am truly blessed. I hear you. I'm blessed. I'm lucky. And I don't even call it lucky. I call it blessed because yeah. it's not luck. It's it's the good Lord above, man. Yeah. It's not luck. Yeah. Good for you for saying that out loud, too, and yeah. sharing. Absolutely. It's uh, a great place to be. What about, um, uh, um, let's talk about the future now as far as uh, music goes. Do you have... Have you got any uh, hidden projects you can reveal, or is no. there is there a list of kind of things to do before I die that you got to do? Get, or? I just from a show go, I just get some more music in. I mean, it's crazy. I've got three hundred and change songs in my mm -hmm. repertoire, but you can't you can't you can't do that many. No. And but I'd like to change it up because some of it's getting boring for me too. And I've actually heard yeah. some people say, you know. Add some music Time in, to change some different stuff. And well, you got to stay relevant, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't, the stuff I do really isn't today music anyway, right? So it's not a relevancy factor from that. It's, well, you've got a certain demographic. Oh, absolutely. We're all, sure. yeah, and we're all, our, our demographic's getting less and less. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is something that you have to be aware of, too, right? I'm playing yeah. classic rock. Yeah. And, like, old school country. Yeah. Not old, old school country, but Garth Brooks, Tim McGraw. Yeah, I know old, what you mean. Older before no Hank in there. Uh, I should. Yeah. Even Hank. Some, even Hank Jr. Give me some Hank and um, some Merle. And, yeah, but that's and that, again you know, whiskey I, songs. Yeah, man. I know. It, right? I'd, I'd I'd love to. First, it's hard for me to sing that low. Yeah. Um, and again, it, it's a lot of the stuff's pretty crying your beer low energy. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. play crying my beer country music. Yeah. I play country music. It's got some. Oh, you do. You, you, well, like Hank Jr. You get all my rowdy friends are coming. Yeah, over tonight but and, I would pick other songs like "Born to Boogie." And, yeah, right. Yeah, right. right for something sure. that's got energy. Um, yeah. Just because I just I I don't know. Maybe I should play more slow songs. I don't know. If I've I always wanted to hear somebody, a, a gentleman I knew, back in the karaoke days, a long time ago. His name was Hank, and he passed a, a few years ago. But he always did a song called "Devil." With the blue dress, yeah. good golly, Miss Molly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's one I've I've never heard a, a keyboard, and, and that's kind of an organ thing, I guess. Well, it a is. Bit, but it I've is. never heard anybody on keyboard play that. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Challenge. All right, I'll I'll add her to the show. <laughs> I know you can pull it off. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. I know the version you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know if it's Steve Winwood doing it or. I don't I know. Don't know. I don't know. But I know the song yeah. I, the, with the two songs there. I know. Yeah. I, I've heard it, and so. Yeah, have you ever like taken? Do you do medleys at all? Like, where you take a I've little tried, piece of all? And I then tried a couple. Make it your own? I tried to do a couple, but I didn't like the quality mm. of the tracks. Yeah. Um, ah, right. You're using tracks, so then you yeah. have to splice so, that all together. Well, whether I didn't have to do the splicing, they done it for me. But I didn't. There's a lot of songs that I love to do, but I can't find a good enough version. Gotcha. I know what you And mean. I'm not going to go up there and do cheese. Yeah. I just yeah. won't do it. I'm not going to do the Karaoke song. is like that. People it's say, exactly can you give me the DK version yeah. or the Absolutely, sound choice version? Absolutely, because it's a big difference. It's a huge difference. Right? Yeah, it's not the same. There's some that are just, eh, yeah, yeah, and then there's some that yeah. are, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm talking some about. Like, sound like a MIDI keyboard. Yeah, exactly. Or the <laughs> drums are horrible because yeah. they're MIDI drums and they didn't do it right. Yeah. And, and but there, again, people got to understand that you're not allowed to actually copy it exactly. No, that's right. You got to change something. Yeah. So you can do it, but you got to change it a little. So the guitar solo can't be exact and no, things that's like right. that. But yeah, copyright laws and all that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Good for you for following that because uh, I think it's you know easy to well I can get away with it. Who's gonna Who's gonna know and whatever? But uh, to pay the licensing or whatever, like I mean, you as a musician, if you wrote a song, you, you want your five cents every Absolutely. time it's played. So Absolutely. why not return it, right? Absolutely. I'm sure Kim Mitchell still gets a pretty big check at his door once yeah. a month. Well, I'd like it to might, think so, right? It might be, you know, might be not what it used to be, but 
It's something. Good old, good, good for him. He deserves, he deserves every penny he gets. Yeah. You know? You like your Kim Mitchell fan, right? Ah, I like yeah. Webster, Kim Mitchell, yeah. yeah. All that stuff. All that classic 70s stuff that all my sisters and brothers turned me on. Yeah. I didn't grow up then. No. Uh, I was 10 in 76. No, I was the same thing. Like, I was in high school. Right. Well, in, well, in pre high school, like 80s, right? You know. Yeah, exactly. And we were listening yeah. to Zeppelin. Yeah, and, and I, but, and... but by then, Zeppelin was gone. Yeah, for so, a long time. Right. <laughs> so our, our exposure into it was all after the fact. Yeah. You know, Pink Floyd had how many albums out by the time we started getting turned on to the Floyd and the Stones no and all kidding, that? Right? Yeah. We didn't grow up with it like my sisters did. Yeah. We're, they're listening to Stone's first album on the radio. Yeah. Right? <laughs> By the time we got around, it, it's like getting yeah. 1980, so Tattoo U's coming out. That's what, like 12, 13th album yeah, by yeah. then? Does it keep you young, Roy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keeps you down. Absolutely. Do you miss high school? <laughs> no. I, I, um, I don't, I, I guess I should say, yeah, I, what I miss about high school is just the time. Yeah. Just to go back and I'm, I miss not having bills and not having responsibility. Right. <laughs> I miss that. Four years of whining uh, about yeah, what you really didn't want to happen. Absolutely, right? <laughs> I miss... Oh, well, I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah, I miss right. not having to worry about nothing. Yeah, I remember. I moved out when I was really young because I, I knew everything and wanted to pay my yeah, own bills. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Life Whoops. smacks you in the head real quick, doesn't it? Sure does. Right? A couple of times. Absolutely. I was lucky. I never moved out of my parents till I was into my 30s. So. Oh, wow. How's your parents doing? Uh, are, they, are they both here? Yeah, no, they both, they they, both passed. They both passed, yeah. Okay. yeah. Dad's about 13 years now. Oh, okay. I'm up 10, something like that. Oh, okay. yeah. So. How did that affect you? Uh, having a big family is huge. Yeah. So thank God for them. Mm -hmm. You still talk to... Oh, yeah. You're, you're close with your family? Yeah. We're, again... Blast. That's tough because you don't get to pick your family. Are. That's tough Again, sometimes. Oh, blast! We're close. I give them. I give any one of my, my, yeah. my cousins. Even my cousins. I give them my last nickel yeah. without question. Yeah, that's we a were, great the, place I didn't to have, be. We didn't have to have friends because you were such a big family. No, we had and seven kids, and, and my mom's sisters. They had seven and four and five, and and they were always together. My sis, my mom's sisters always hung out. So when they hung out, all the kids hung are out. Are you in the middle or the youngest? I'm the youngest. Or, yeah. yeah, I'm the youngest of seven. Do you take so. advantage of that once in a while? Uh, I probably did back in the day, <laughs> so they tell me. Uh, so they say. Yeah, that's Oh, right. sure, you got away yeah. with everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't feel like I You're got away with it. No. I probably did. Were your, parents, were your parents strict? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, my dad was, my dad got involved when Jack, get up here and straighten these kids out before I kill one of them, so. <laughs> yeah. But my mom was a disciplined hander at her, and yeah. she didn't have to do it because she just knew better. Right. I mean, I got whacked. Don't mess I got whacked mine. lots of times, and I deserved every blasted one of them. Yeah. And I thank God for every blasted one of them. You think that's changed? Oh, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's darn near legal. Yeah. Right? Pretty much is. It's, and, it's, and are we too easily offended, Roy? Absolutely. We weren't before? No. No? No. Even when the, way, they, look, the world was different back then because now if you go, you, you, your neighbor's not going to go grab your son and bring him home to you and say, hey, your boy was this, your boy was that. And in fact, yeah. back in our day, if your neighbor straightened you out. You thanked him. You thanked him. <laughs> yeah. Right? It wasn't, I mean, what do you do? Don't you have no right to do that to my son? It was, yeah. thank you for straightening. Hey, what are you doing? Why is the neighbor having to straighten you out? Yeah. Yeah, and that's changed. It's too. respect. Yeah, right? It really, it's just respect. Nobody has respect anymore. Well, is it going to go, is it going to go too far? Or has it already gone yeah, too far well, that it'll start? Well, do you think it'll it's, start to come back the other way? Sadly. We've not. gone too past oh, I, that, I, eh? I, Without getting too crazy, yes, it's the way it's supposed to happen. Right. <laughs> it's just happening the way it's what do you mean? gonna happen. Well it's supposed to go the direction we are? Yeah, that's yeah. It's supposed to get worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, are you speaking from the good book? Good book says that. Yeah. So it seems to be that You're a faith you're a man of faith, obviously. That's yeah. what that's what you see. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. The wall's black. You call it black. It's black. Right. The wall's purple. You call it purple. It's purple. Yeah. There it is. Interesting. Why? Why is everybody so offended? Right is wrong, and wrong is right now. Up is down. Down yeah. is up. Yeah. It's crazy. It's twisted. Didn't think I'd see that in our day. Well, yeah, we've always said that probably since we were younger, saying, "Oh, that, yeah, but not in our lifetime." Yeah. Well, sooner or later, it's got to happen in right. somebody's lifetime. 
And now it's happening here, right? Yeah, it's just the world itself, right? It's crazy. It's messed yeah. up. Nobody cares about anybody anymore. All they care about is themselves. Mm. You think that? You don't well, think I don't think it's everywhere. I think there's still all kinds of great, good people on this planet, yeah, yeah. right? On planet Earth. But yeah. it's getting less. Yeah. Interesting. What's, uh, is there, so how do we, how do we get beyond it? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, if I had the answer to that. Because you're a caring guy. I, yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know, I believe that you're a caring guy. You oh. help people. I've seen you help people out. Absolutely. From afar, I'm watching. Well, there's, you know, and that's good. So yeah, we gotta, need more Roy's then. Well, you got to just you got to you got to care about other people first. That's really Pay what you got to do. All that stuff. Yeah. Right. So what's the next gig coming up? Oh, uh, what's today? Wednesday. So Saturday. well, something like that. Well, this is Wednesday. pre-recorded live, but I mean, in the future, uh, in town, you got some gigs. Yeah, ups and downs. Nice. Uh, out to Grogs a couple times. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, How do you like playing out there? I like Grog. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you get a different I mean, it's crowd getting cold the now, time. so we'll be inside. Yeah, but okay, but yeah, I love playing. I'll out have there. to check that out. Yeah, they, they like, like uh, the food's great and, and people are fabulous. And yeah, yeah, I really like playing out All there. Right. Do you I have like, a Facebook page where people can see where you're playing, or uh, how do we find out? I have a website, but I <laughs> I never keep it up to date. I'm so busy that I never. <laughs> I'm so busy playing. I never. I need. To, you want to sign up for the gig? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I need somebody to manage my yeah, marketing. Yeah, I'm not busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, but personally, you're on Facebook, though, right? Yeah. People can see stuff there. Yeah, they can look me up. Check yeah. it out. Right. And, uh, Roy I try and do, I think Susan does a better job of it for me than, <laughs> than I do because. And uh, she's working right now, so yeah. we got the, the host herself with some, aside from the cats. Yeah. She, uh, Did you, you know, inherit post, cats? Uh, yeah, I inherited the cats. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. But she'll, uh, she posts when I'm playing. Yeah, okay. You know? So she'll just make a post on her Facebook that I'm playing here and playing there. Right. I know I, I should, but, uh, you know. It's and hard to keep up that social I'm a media. Weird guy. I'm a weird guy because I know, like, i got a buddy of mine that comes out and he barks at me because I don't put a tip jar out all the time. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. I'm one of those believers uh, that I'm at the, if, I'm at a, if I'm doing a, an outside gig for myself, I'll put a tip jar out there. But sure. if, I, if you hire me to play... I'm getting paid already. Yeah, I hear you. But I get it too. Like I, I yeah, and, no, it's a that's one of those debatable I topics, know, right? Like, I know. And hey, oh, there's a tip jar. Jeez, not paying him enough. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> then, that's not what it no, is. No, no bonus. Right? Uh, I get it because I've been around that, but and I don't mind throwing in a, a whatever. I've no, I, and hey, I, right on there. And right. I so appreciate when people do. There's times I've made four hundred dollars in a tip jar. Yeah, yeah. And then no, I so pr- I appreciate it, but loonies. I don't expect it. <laughs> And, you know, so I don't... Put it out, Roy. I say put it out. Yeah. They will or they won't. Yeah, uh, yeah that's yeah, true. No, you're right. They don't have to. So that's right. They will, they it's will. not expected. And I, that's what I worries me about. I don't want them to think that I expect them to do yeah, it because it's there. Yeah. We don't... Nobody likes to ask for money. Right. And that's what you feel like you're well, asking yeah, for I wasn't, If I wasn't getting paid, then I'd be shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going, hey, <laughs> girls, get over here. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You next. Hey. Yeah, pass it around. Right? Yeah, I got you. Cool stuff. Roy, this has been so much fun. Thanks, man. And I know uh, you're one of those ones we can keep going for hours, but even <laughs> yeah. the internet only wants me to go so long. Yeah, so no, that's great, This man. has been thanks. a lot of fun. Yeah, and, it's and, good uh, to see you, and thanks for having me on. And Absolutely. It's always, I think it's long overdue. It's always a pleasure. It was years ago, years ago yeah. that we did it, and I, I the other day I was sitting around, and I do, and I make a list, and I go, I oh, Roy, why wouldn't I interview him? So that's why we're here. Thanks Beautiful. again, buddy. No problem. Thanks to man. all of you for watching. Thank As you. always, click the like and the love, but the share button. That's the one we want you to click so we can share Roy's story here today and everybody else that gets interviewed here on the show. But right now, that's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. We'll see you next time right here in the show. Bye for now. Bye bye. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>